Oh, like we're live already, like right now, right now? Right now, right now. Hey, what's up, everybody? How are you all doing? I think you have the wrong mic. Oh, oh, hang on. I think I do. It's that one. Mic check, ha ha ha. What were you even checking earlier if you had the wrong Because mic? I didn't realize that I didn't have the right drop down clicked. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday night live Q&A thing that we do. Sorry about that. That's okay. Now we know it works. Uh, we take questions from Patreon from a post that we made earlier this morning, and we answer those questions as well as any questions from you in the comments this evening. Um... We did not really have a whole lot of like predetermined conversation planned. I just didn't because. What do you mean? I, you know, I didn't have like a subject. Tonight? No, not really. Except that there was so much going on this week. And I think that's kind of why. Me and you had a lot of stuff going on. And also um, there was a lot going on this week with even our videos that we, we put out, that just everybody's like, you know, the Epiphone Gibson saga rages on. So does, uh, has anybody gotten money from Reverb? Saga. Do we know about that? If you've sold something on Reverb uh, last weekend or this week, let us know, or Etsy. Was that a question? Yeah. Oh, because Reverb a, and Etsy are the same. Because Reverb is owned by Etsy, so yeah. Um, I was affected by the SVB situation because one of my people that pays me, uh, banks there. And so I didn't get paid. So that's kind of sucky. Which is weird. Um, speaking of how I get paid, there's a bunch of links in the description. All those people support the channel and it helps the channel if you shop around using those links. So do that. There's Stumac, Sweetwater, um... Runway Audio, of course Dylan Talks Tone if you want pickups for your guitar. Uh, did you see in the thumbnail, the super sweet purple ones that we made for Dan over there at Guns and Guitars for his community build? Uh, has they, he made any videos yet? He has posted a couple of things. They look really good. In You saw the picture. Mm -hmm. They look awesome in the guitar. So um, apparently that was a deal where they voted... Um, on what they should use in that guitar, and they all voted for those. Which is kind of cool, because, you know, that means his audience voted for those. Which I thought was kind of neat. And you made something new. And I made something new that I've never done before. We might actually do um, a short run based on that concept. I'm also thinking about figuring out how to add that as an option on the website, but it would not be like an extra $5. It would probably be like an extra $40 because it's a lot of work. But um, I'm thinking about that because there's some really neat things we could do now that I've figured out the concept about how to make those pickups that way. Um, they're the ones you saw in the thumbnail if you if you saw that beforehand. So, um, well, let's just get into some comments and we'll just see how this takes us tonight because, you know. Or some, uh, let's get into our Patreon questions, and let's just see where this takes us tonight. I'm actually um, kind of looking forward to it. Looking forward to answering questions? Yeah. All right. And just free-balling it, you know? What? No. Not, not that. But whatever I meant to say when I said that. Greg, <laughs> I went down an internet rabbit hole the other day and found something on a hi-fi forum discussion about signal clipping that intrigued me. They were saying that when the waveform is clipped, harmonics that are technically present in the original signal but would normally be totally inaudible are compressed into the audible range. And it's the interaction of all these normally irrelevant frequencies that result in what we hear as distortion. I had a vague notion of clipping and compression being related, but is their description correct? Um, 
I would say that on the face of it, it sort of makes sense. The problem is, is that there is some destruction involved because um, both things happen. The signal compresses. That's why you get extra sustain from it. Um, but I think there is some destruction of the signal. You d it's not one-to-one. -one. It doesn't just make everything quieter and make it long. It, you know, it's not like um, squeezing icing out of one of those tubes or toothpaste out of a tube, you know, like where you squish it and it comes out skinnier and longer. It's not like that. Um, I think some of it gets destroyed along the way. Um, but that's one that I would have to ask somebody that knows more about that stuff than me. Because I know on a basic level what it's doing, but... Beyond just hearing it and making it sound good. Uh, the other thing, too. Here's another thing to think about. Is if you read it in a hi-fi forum, that doesn't necessarily mean it applies to a guitar in the same way because hi-fi people are crazy. If you think guitar people are crazy, hi-fi people are even crazier, and they're dealing with a wider um, dynamic range than a, than a guitar, so, yeah. Interesting question, though. That's gonna be like a sh ponder it in the shower one. James, does the preamp section of an amp do all the tone shaping? Or does the power amp section also shape the tone? I'm curious because I'm thinking about having multiple preamps to switch between, such as switching between Vox, Marshall, Fender preamp circuits and just one power amp. But I'm not sure if that will work if the power amp plays a big role in the overall tone. Okay, so <clears throat> this is an interesting question because it's sort of related to the last one. Um, if you take a 6L6 amp, let's let's pretend that the power amp is exactly the same, and you take, uh, let's use an EL34 amp, because uh, we could use a Marshall and a like a 6505, and they sound different, and most of that difference comes from the preamp because of the way the preamp saturates, the way the preamp distorts. So you can, obviously how the amp is designed, that's the whole idea about amp design is how does it color the signal when it amplifies it coming out of the guitar. And what frequencies are accentuated versus what frequencies are not in the preamp to the power amp. So uh, if you ever get a chance to like hang around with Amplitube, like the little app on your iPad and plug a guitar into it with an iRig or whatever, and you can mess around with those various, you can play with the blocks and you can mess around with the various preamps, digitally, it will change a lot. Um, I don't know if one, I don't know if you could say that one has more of a, an effect than the other, but they both do, for sure. Tube choice, uh, rectifier choice, preamp tube choice, uh, like, even going from like a 12AX7 to, to a 12AU7 or a 12AT7 compresses different and it leaves you with less or more. Like, just like the last question that we just had. This is another area where I, it steps, I, like I said, I know enough to like know and go and do it and make the sound that I want to make, but I don't know enough. You'd have to talk to an amp person. We should get an amp person on the podcast and ask these questions because that's a great, it would be a great conversation. Um, it's a little above my pay grade on, in a quick conversation. If we were sitting around a campfire, I could like think this all through for a whole evening and talk a to you about evening? it. Well, no, it would take me that long and I could figure it out, but um, I'm not an amp guy. I'm a guitar setup and pickup guy. You're that guy. I'm that guy. Ivan, would reversing a P bass split pickup make much difference? The conventional way places the bass side closer to the neck, giving potential for lowered lows and higher highs from the other one. 
Uh, if you mean... Did you just yawn on a reception? Yeah. Um, if you mean, like, the pickup to offset like this, and you went like that, uh, yeah, it would change, it would probably change the mid-range more than anything, because you would effectively be moving the pickup over. Like, one would be going this way, and one would be going this way, right? So, I think you would probably just be affecting the mid-range more than anything. That would be my guess. Foxy and Craig. That's a new one. I recently got the KHE Amp Cab Selector and couldn't be more happy with it. It has allowed me to switch between cabs or amp heads so quickly. It also can be combined with digital amps, making it pretty incredible. Not sure if you have used this item or have any thoughts on it. I have seen it. I have not used it. And I think that is very cool. If you can... Especially if you have a cab that you like and you can switch between them. I've seen other people like in their YouTube studios with a bunch of amps use them. That'd be pretty cool. And be able to switch between it like a Kemper and stuff. That'd be awesome. Hmm. Super chat from Van Shank Guitars. Thank you for the super chat. Get Sean Tubbs. Is that an amp Ooh. person? Ooh. You know, that would be a great, that would be a great get. I should try. I don't know if I can. He might be bigger time than I could probably get, but may maybe. He He's really cool. Rob F. also said Lyle from the something audio channel. Psyop. I don't know. Mm, who mm -mm. is that? I don't know I don't who, that, know who is. that is. Leslie did a backflip. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> All right. You said hold the last two. Are those the last two? There are two left. Yep. Those are the ones for after 9 o'clock. Okay. Because we're going to talk about guitar stuff till 9 o'clock, and then we go off topic, and we actually got some questions from Patreon for that, too. So we know we have a couple things to talk to talk about after then. So let's, do you want to go through the comments? Sure. Um... I'm just going to go in order. Okay. Robert Hastings. Hello, Dylan and Les. In the order they give them to me. I got it. Not in the order you submitted them. It throws them all around. Just want to clear that up. Robert Hastings. Hello, Dylan and Leslie and all my DTT friends. I just have time for a like and comment. Okay, that seals it. It's time to pull the trigger on my purple guitar project. P90 can wait. Thanks. Ooh, awesome. <clears throat> I will tell you that we will do that, but it's going to be about 40 bucks a pickup. It takes me a long time to do that. It is, it adds a long time. <laughs> Somebody phonetically tell me how to, how to say this Rob person's name. Or somebody said Lyle. Oh, somebody said Lyle. Somebody said Rob. Lyle. I don't is know. an amp tech who has an awesome YouTube channel and an awesome sense of humor. Oh, um, cool. Can you just tell me how to phonetically say whatever his channel is? That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. JC says, first timer. Nice. Thanks, dude. I think he probably watches our videos because maybe he's commented before. First I could time be, live? I could be wrong, but maybe he's first time live. Awesome. Psionic. It's live. Okay. Psionic. <clears throat> What did they say the channel was? Psionic Audio. Lyle. I will, I will talk you. to him. Um, Fat Philosopher. This week's gear news left out Schecter's new signature series for the band body count. Two guitars and a bass. Any possibility of getting one on the channel? You said something to me about that last week, and I went and looked for it and couldn't find it. Um... Yeah, because I get a list of things from various places, and that's what I share on the news, and I didn't see it, and I was looking for it. I did go back and look for it and didn't see it. So I will make another attempt to uh, find that, because that's really cool, body count. I mean, heck yeah. That's really cool. 
totally. Thank you for mentioning that I missed that. I didn't, but I couldn't find it. Paul Need says, so when will Gibson start assembling their guitars from Epiphone supplied parts? Epiphone supplied parts? I don't know. Epiphone supplied parts. So this is an interesting one. <clears throat> I knew this was going to come up. And actually, somebody on the YouTube channel, when I said that we were going to talk about random stuff today, I knew this one was going to come up. So I kept this comment handy. Starting to look like a trend, a $5,000 Gibson acoustic with an Epiphone decal, a $3,200 Epiphone casino, limited edition V's and Explorers at $1,300, that's that one over there, just a few hundred dollars cheaper than the Gibson. It makes you wonder if they're jacking the prices of the entry-level brand because they are siphoning sales from the expensive Gibsons. I don't think so. As you have noticed over the last few weeks, I have been doing some fairly effective albeit controversial social experiments with chatting about Epiphone and Gibson stuff. Social experiments. I did it on purpose. I wanted to see what the reaction would be in a few different contexts. And the context is, if I post something about Gibson and say how awesome it is, people get mad. If I post something about Epiphone and how awesome it is, Everyone is suddenly agreeable. If I say I own one of each, I am therefore a snob. It is the weirdest thing. So I think, I don't think, there's, it has nothing to do with anything except for, could it be the guitar player's fault and not the company's fault? Could it be that Gibson is like, wait a minute. All these people on the internet are hating on Epiphone all the time. So let's give them some truly aspirationally nice Epiphone instruments that are very good. That bridge the gap between the Gibson custom shop and an Epiphone, which is what that is. Same thing with the acoustic guitar. And yeah, they're expensive, but it's a brand it puts the brand together. It shows that it's all a family uh, from a branding perspective. Because I think that guitar players have made it up in their heads that Epiphones are these cheap guitars and Les Pauls and stuff are for snobs. Um, and I know that's a generalization, but I think it is an accurate one. And so I think that Gibson is working to make it all look like a family. Like, if I have a cheap Epiphone, if you have an expensive, that we could call that an expensive Epiphone because it's 1300 bucks. In steps, just like Fender does with Squire. So you have, you know, the Squire ones, then the Mexico ones, then the cheaper American ones, then the most, more expensive American ones, and then the custom shop. Again, this goes back to the same thing about having a price point for every, every thing and making everything special enough to make you want to like happy meal it, like collect all four. And that's why they're not making these in Gibsons. They're trying to make the Epiphone brand more desirable and not be like a dividing line of the internet like it's a political conversation. Cause that's what I feel like, or a religious conversation. That's what I feel like people make it into. And so maybe Gibson is wise enough to put some time and effort into that. Um, I think that's what it is. That's my take on it. I could be wrong, but that's, that's my take on it. I think people need to stop looking at these companies as big bad entities that are trying to screw you because they're not. They're trying to make money, but they make money by making guitars and you buy them. So, you know. Yeah, that's what I think. They're not going to make the Gibson brand any cheaper. So just get that out of your head. There's never going to be a $1,000 Les Paul, actual Les Paul. It just won't happen. Okay, next. You ready now? Yep. Yep, yep. That's their name. Good name. 
Hey, Dylan, is there anything cool in South Carolina with respect to guitars that comes to mind? Ooh, is there? Hmm. Uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, there's a really good, like, mandolin acoustic instrument. Randy, what's his name, is down by Myrtle Beach. And he's really good. He's, like, world famous. I can't remember what his name is, though, because I don't use him. But all the guys around here, everybody knows who he is. Like, if you break a neck on an acoustic guitar or if you have a bridge pop off or if you have, you know, a split in the top of a violin or a mandolin oh, or something. Savannah. Or maybe, Savannah. Maybe it is Savannah. That's Georgia. Bronx. Oh, that's Georgia. He's in Savannah. So, no. There's nothing cool. That I'm sure there of. is. I'm sure, I'm sure there, there is. is, but I don't, I can't think of anything. There's a bunch of stuff in North Carolina, like a bunch of guitar builders and, um, you know, stuff like that. Really cool shops in North Carolina, but I can't think of anybody in South. Of course, lots of stuff in Georgia. Charles Wallace said, yes or no, did you receive my email and did it work? Yes. And yes. <laughs> okay. Frank Hughes, I'm building an Esquire and thinking of buying a pre-wired harness. Do you make one? Um, we do not currently, but it would take me no time at all to make one and put it on the website. I could do that. Sounds like a yes. <clears throat> I could do that. People have been asking for it, so. Rob F., have you heard the new no solo from the new Extreme single? It's amazing. Rick Beato did a video on it earlier today. I have seen it, and I did not watch that video, but it is in my neck queue to watch it soon. <clears throat> Peter Kelly, what do you think would be the best pickups for a semi-hollow body guitar with a big speed? I love your show. Thanks, man. Um, if they're humbuckers, I would put a DAF set in it. And I would get the modern ones, not the vintage ones. Because if it's a hollow body with a Bigsby, it's going to be jangly enough. And you want to calm that down some. So I would get our modern, which all it means is that they're wax potted and that they have four uh, wires. They're the same exact pickup, but they're wax potted and they're four wires. Get the DAFs. That's what I would do. Kodo. Hello. New viewer. Great channel. Thanks, man. we got a few new people. This is awesome. Curtis Chavez, your thoughts on Supro style Vista Tone pickups? Vista Tone. While you look that up, Go ahead. Murray said, Why is your hat curved? Because that's the way. No, we're going to answer that question. <laughs> we are going to answer that question after we answer this question. Um, I don't know what those are. Oh! Yeah, those are cool. Those are an Alnico pickup, but they're basically just like a humbucker with fancy stuff on them. But they are very cool uh, for like a Rezo glass kind of deal. What do you want to know about them? Your thoughts? Uh, they're cool. They're really cool. Okay, the reason my hat is bent is because it came that way. And it was meant to be that way. See, when some hats come, they are meant to be flat. And some hats are meant to be bent. And so when you get one that's meant to be flat, you wear it flat. And when there's one that's meant to be bent, you wear it bent. Okay, next question. Robinson's Customs. Did anybody else catch the Casino Guitars estate sale thing today? Also, they posted a walkthrough of the Asheville Vintage Guitar Show. Pretty sweet. They did mention Dylan at one point. Did they mention me? I didn't watch the whole thing. I need to go back and watch the rest of it. I watched like half of it. And I was just like, nah, bunch of old guitars. I don't care. Like, I think it's cool. I love vintage guitars. And I actually Is wish. Is that the one we went to before? No, or we went to, we went to one? one in the Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, Columbia, South Carolina actually has a pretty good vintage guitar show. So there's something cool in yeah, South Carolina. Yeah, that's like see, whenever it's it is. Whenever so. it is, yeah. It's like the gun show billboards. Like, 
every time you see the gun show billboard, it was always last weekend. It was never, you know, the coming up weekend. I can never remember. They like post them in the past, right? I swear they put the billboards up after After. it's over. Um, I don't, I'm not a gun show guy, but that's like the first thing I could think of. Like (laughs) you always see them afterwards and you always miss it. And I wish I would have known about the Asheville thing because there was some really cool stuff there. And I would have loved to have gone up and shot it and seen that and even hung out with those guys. That would have been really cool. Um, Because I like the the guitar shows. I really enjoy going to them and just seeing all the stuff. I have no real interest in owning most of it because it's getting so dumb. Like, I don't know. It's getting dumb. Oh, he's make Doc's making a comment about your hat. I was like, where did that comment come from? He said, Quattro, the original four-wheel drive group B monitor. Oh, you guys. Doc, you you should check this out. He hasn't been here. Okay, after after nine o'clock, I'll tell you a cool story. Remind me to tell you like about holding him hostage. the Audi Quattro thing after nine o'clock, because it's off it's off topic, but it's about it's about Audi, so it's it's cool. <clears throat> oh, he said monster. He just spelled it wrong, and I didn't see his follow up comment. Gotcha. My bad. Um. Okay, hang on. Sorry. That's okay. I was uh, actually getting caught up on a bunch of guitar YouTube today because I haven't watched any in for forever, like two weeks. I haven't listened to anything, but webinar oh you were in a webinar I'm like way behind on podcasts and everything wait so you have tomorrow too right Mm -mm. oh it's over now Mm -hmm. oh nice yeah she was like enslaved to her headphones and screen all day like could not walk away two days two days yeah yesterday and today I'm tired Lars Bright Dylan what's your favorite amp um if I had to choose any amp ever it would be a Super Reverb, or I had a brown face Vibroverb with two tens in it that I wish I still had. I really loved that amp. So those two would probably be my favorites. Charles Wallace said, ask Zach. He was a tech for Brad Paisley. He also knows Dr. Z. Oh, yeah. Um, Lars Bright. Musicians are weird. People spend $5,000 on a Klon and $600 on a mass-produced Digitech Bad Monkey. I saw a bunch of posts about that today. It must have been a today thing. Yeah, so what happened was... Josh, what had happened was... What had happened was... Josh Scott from JHS yeah. was like, this is a really cool pedal. And let me tell you about it. Even though it's this Chinese junk thing from 20 years ago that cost $20 when it was new, here's some cool things about it. And he made this video, right? The next day, they're like 600 bucks on Reverb. That's wow. probably why the bank went out of business. I'm just kidding. Um, and he posted today, he's like, well, y'all. Well, I'm not friends with him, so that's not Well, he I posted that. today on Facebook, it. he's like, y'all, it's not my fault that you slept on a perfectly good pedal <laughs> for 20 years, and then I mentioned it once in a video and it went crazy. Like, don't blame me for that value going nuts. Mm. <clears throat> but, yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. James Howell. The G and B strings on my Strat go out of tune. They seem to stick. I removed the string tree, which helped, but the problem still exists. Any way to fix that easily? Nut stuff. <laughs> That's a nut thing. We're going to have a bunch of nut content coming pretty soon. We'll be all like over the nuts. It. Yep. Yep. Because we got a bunch of nut stuff from Stu Mac. How many times? <laughs> JC, wanting to buy my first Fender Strat and would appreciate some advice on how to look into this without getting scammed or roasted by friends for buying a fake. Thanks. Well, buy from a reputable dealer. Number one, so buy from a reputable dealer, and then it depends where your budget is. Get back in the comments and tell me what your budget is, what you're looking, or what you're looking for. What are the, oh, no, I don't even want to talk about your budget. 
because maybe it's above your budget, but you're going to like save for an extra month and get what you really want. Don't be like, I can get two cheap ones instead of one good one. Like get what you really want, but get back in the comments and see if we can catch that. Put a bunch of question marks in front of it so that we can find out what you're looking for. What have you been shopping for? What models have you been shopping for? And I will tell you a couple of the differences that might sway you one way or another. Yep, yep, says brand loyalty and actual objective facts sometimes run parallel, by the way, but most times they live in separate universes. That's an interesting point. I... There's lots of nut comments that I'm having to let through now. Oh, Thanks. good. Oh, because is the auto thing yes. hiding them or something? Yes. That's awesome. You know, you can be, you can like a brand and be like brand loyal and still be objective. I have Gibsons that I am fully, you just have to be, uh oh, you basically have to just say, I accept that. The Gibson SG Junior bridge does not adjust, and I have to kind of stay on top of it. But I like it, and it's cool, and that's all that I care, and it doesn't matter. Or, you know, I like the fact that a Telecaster has three barrel saddles. You know, like, you don't have to listen to the people in the forums. Just be objective, and if you like the guitar, you like the guitar. That's most important thing. If you like what you have, then don't listen to anybody else. Yeah. So let's do some more yep, yep comments while we got him. Okay. I hope the video about nuts has a thumbnail of multiple guys standing around holding guitar nuts in their hands looking anxious. Oh, my word. And then he said it was like the Philip McKnight effect when a YouTube review ends up really good. Yeah, he was talking about that. Uh, I was listening to last week's podcast, catching up on his, and he was saying that happened with that carbon fiber guitar that he, he did. They ran out. Sean McMillan, are the Epiphone inspired by Gibson, a replacement for the Gibson Studio series? No. Because they still have Studio Les Pauls, um, the Les Paul Studio. It's just a really good Epiphone. I take that back. It's like vintage spec Epiphone. Yeah. Rusty Shackelford. Are your center punch pickups different for bridge and neck position or interchangeable? Interchangeable. We do make them to where the wire comes out on a different side, but if you have enough wire, you could just use them <clears throat> in both. It's Victoria G. I'm glad I don't play Epiphones, Gibsons, so I don't have to worry about the mind games and worry about the brand value and how I will be perceived. Yeah, or you could just not. Not worry about it. Just not worry about it. Steve Rezer, I just bought a purple Reb G20 last night on Gear and Beer. That sounds fun. Yes, and it Sean does. Tubbs played for Carrie Underwood. Wait, have we met him then? So we met... I think we met the guy that replaced him. Oh. His name was Aaron or something? I can see him, and it's not Sean Tubbs. Okay. So we didn't meet him. Maybe it was him. He didn't have long hair at the time. I don't know what he looks like now. You know what? I know who was with us when I met that guy. Yeah. I will ask. ask them and see if I already met him. I might have met him. He was so nice. Yeah. And Sean Tubbs seems so nice that it might have been. The problem was that was at that thing and there was just people everywhere and everyone was talking to me all at once. And it was a weird... But that... I might have met him already. I don't, mm, I don't know. That was weird. Yeah, anyway, wow, that's really funny. Random. Robinson's Customs. Hey, D-Man. You mentioned the Reddit yesterday. I know you have a Somnium. 
any comparisons of note, or is it too early? No, there is no comparisons. However, I think I'm getting one. Because he messaged me today. Reddick Guitars. He ha it's a pickup swappy. Yeah. Okay. I was like, somebody else asked, but it was also <clears throat> Robinson's Customs, Dylan Reddit versus Somnium. So that might be coming because he messaged me today and he's like, would you like one to review? And I have not replied to him yet, but I think, I guess the answer will be yes. I will try yeah, to get one should. of those. The other person that, will be like, send it back. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Maybe we will do that. I'll shoot him a message in the morning and we'll see what we can work out. He wanted to have a phone call in a Zoom meeting and see what other content we could make. and So yeah, maybe we will do that. That'd be awesome. And I could get a relish at the same time. That'd be so cool. The only reason I didn't want to get a relish is because I can't put my pickups in there. So before anybody asks, I tried, I was going to buy a relish. my own, Like actually buy one. And have it around here. This was before I got the Somnium. And have it around here and use it and whatever. The problem is, is that Relish does not own the patent on the Quico Changeo pickups. Somnium owns the patent on the Quico Changeo pickups. But the part of the patent that makes that relevant is customer can't do it in these individual cartridges. So I don't know how Reddick is getting around that, but maybe it's because they come together. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, all I know is that in order for them to sell this guitar relish, to sell these guitars this way, you have to send your pickups to them and they put them in the cartridges and then you can put them in the guitar. And I didn't want to do that. And I actually asked my guys at Sweetwater if I sent my pickups to them, could I buy those things and have them do it? And they didn't want to do it. So I ended up not buying a Relish. That's the only reason I don't have one. Otherwise, I would own one. Because my buddy was their artist relations guy for a long time. I totally could have got one. But somebody has one, right? Yeah. Uh, Zoltan has one. Okay. I'm like, somebody did it. Yeah, but he, he has had, like, one. like a tech that and did I, it or something? I had to send my pickups to Relish in Sweden. Oh, Relish would do yes. it. Yes. Oh. They put my pickups in those cartridges and sent them to the end okay, user, okay. which is one of my customers. Okay. But I, knew I it was couldn't. Something. That all that messing around made that guitar not desirable to me. Hmm. Because if we come out with a new pickup and I want to throw it in the guitar and do a video, I couldn't do it. So it was like that doesn't make sense. So then Somnium came into the picture and they've been awesome. But yeah, we'll we'll check out the Reddick thing. That'd be awesome. Hmm. Yep. Um. <clears throat> whoops, I'm not in the question panel. I was about to get lost. Um, I feel like I've seen a couple of the, are you making up words? Maybe. <clears throat> I always want to say Bud Light 88. <laughs> it's not Bud Light. It's just Bud Legit 88. Any chance of you doing a vid on the Friedman Pink Taco V2? Probably not. Because I don't have the connections for that live to play guitar Dylan have a question how do you intuition a decked Floyd wrote I'm just gonna read them as they send them yeah. I try to correct them but I don't I shouldn't how do you correct intonation on a Floyd Rose you have to have the little tool and it on goes a decked Floyd Rose does that make a difference it, I mean he just probably has a block in it so you can't move it. But basically, you still have to have that little tool. You put it in there and it like clamps in and then you loosen the screw and then you check your intonation and you screw the little thing on the back and then you tighten it up and you take the tool out. Next time I have a Floyd Rose here, we will do the video because I have the tools. I just don't have a guitar with a Floyd Rose right now, I don't think. Nope. Um, we're going to leave any non-guitar stuff till after nine. We have 20 minutes left. Okay. Um, Ben Allmark, Dylan, what is your preference? 22 or 24 frets and why? And I'd love every, anybody else's opinion and thoughts as well. I don't care. <clears throat> um, I don't have a, I don't have a reason. Uh, I, that, I don't play. I never a, use a sweaty glass. I hate it. Is it dripping on you? Yes. 
I don't play, you know, I don't make my money up there. So I don't really care. I'm not a weedily deedily guy. So I don't need 24 frets. Um, I think it looks cool. But I don't, I don't really care. Stu Crombie. Have you heard of Rewind PAFs in the States? When I heard his 57 or 58, I thought that it sounds like an old Les Paul. I have not heard of that one. There's a bunch of people that do it, and I've not heard of that one. Rick Bonneville. Dylan, what do you think of hey, the new feature that lets you take out vocals on iTunes songs? For me, it's a bonus. No pesky vocals whilst learning a tube. I did not know that you could do that. That's like instant karaoke. Because don't they have the lyrics on there too? Mm. I, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could do that either. Uh-uh. I'd probably like a lot of music if there was no vocals. <laughs> You'd be like, I like Evanescence now. <laughs> Sorry. I don't <laughs> not like Evanescence. <laughs> It was just a female vocalist that I was oh. I was trying to think of because you don't usually like women vocalists. Mm -mm. <laughs> Live to play guitar. Hi, Dylan. I'm just curious. How do you raise a screwed in humbucker on EVH guitars? They still are adjustable. They they're probably on a spring with a screw going into the wood. Erica Oliver, I have a semi hollow body hardtail Gretsch, but I want a Gibson like hard rock humbuckers in it. I'm looking at the Thruxton. That would be the one. That would give you the slashy kind of sound. That's a really good pickup. I've actually got two sets over there. I'm making them right now. Yeah, Rusty Fender says, yeah, it's called Apple Sing, and it uses machine learning to remove the voice. Pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, I had no idea. I think I did hear about that now that you said what it's called. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I, I didn't know. That's cool. Um, Mike Jones. <clears throat> I got four guitar nuts in my palm. Three are blue. One is white. Which is right? Trick question. Seriously, I've been 3D printing guitar nuts and the different plastics have different tone. Want to talk about it? Yeah, because the durometer of a material makes a huge difference in the nut and the saddle of a guitar, big time. So that's why, also Mike Jones, I love what you did with social distortion, just saying. <laughs> um, anyway, um, your guitar is amazing. Um, yeah, so the durometer, the hardness of the nut and the saddle is huge, 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 huge. That's why you can tell a difference when you go from plastic to graph tech or bone or whatever. My only contention with bone talk is, nut talk, is people thinking that it has to be bone. And bone is actually not the optimum material. Because bone is a sponge. That is what it is. Bone is a sponge. And it can be hard. And it can be, uh, you know, hard enough to be good. But it is never, it will never be uh, consistent like a synthetic material will be. Because of how it's made. Um, so everybody wants to say bone is the best and it just isn't. Stay. And it stinks, and it's gross. And it's really, the thing is, is that you can take a, a piece of bone and you can be like, okay, well, this is the density of this material in its most optimal state. You could take like a good one, measure the density of it, make a synthetic that's exactly the same density, up the lubri lubrosity of it, and, ha mm -hmm, and have a synthetic material that doesn't get that dude's strat out of tune, and sounds just like bone and many players have done it but bone's not consistent right no i mean what if they have osteoporosis what if the cow had osteoporosis sure exactly i mean they're a mammal you remember when i used to buy those big bags of bone and I... <sighs> yes <laughs> 
And I would literally have to like, you hold them up to the light and you look at them and you throw away like a third or half of them. And they stink. And they stink. And they're, it's just bone stupid. The only reason bone is a thing is because it's what it was in the old days. It's 2023. We should be past it now. That's the conversation I like to have about that. But yes, the durometer of the material makes a huge difference and you should continue to experiment with your synthetic materials. I think that's very cool. And I really like gold top Les Pauls. Mike Jones. These are weird. Um... <laughs> you know, like my segue? It's not a segue into what? You don't even know what's coming. <laughs> I don't. I don't. But I never know what's coming. Frank, make a 49 millimeter neck P90. Pretty please. One that can be paired with your 50 millimeter bridge pickup. Why? He said pretty please. I don't know. I think maybe he said something else. Oh, he said, why do you not offer a 49 millimeter P90 neck pickup for the Gibson guys? Make one to pair with your 50 millimeter pickup. That would be rad. Because it's pointless. Because it's not actually 49 millimeters. It's 49.2 millimeters. And if 49.2 millimeters to 50 millimeters, 0.8 of a millimeter throws you off... I don't know what to tell you. Um, I will tell you that our uh, humbucker size P90s are 49.2 because that's the only size that I can get them in. But I think that whole thing is dumb, so I don't do it. That's really why I think it's dumb. All right, we have like 13 comments still in like 14 minutes. Excellent. Lightning round. Kirk. Kirk? Kirkpatrick. What's the best way to splice or extend a short pickup wire? Just splice it. Solder it. Not going to hurt nothing. Make sure it's insulated properly. Um, it looks like a comment. Angelo Laren. Pickup alternative for PRS 8515s. DAFs. JC, what's the big deal about the CIJ and MIJ? My budget keeps me in the $800 field, not ready to spend $1,000 for a guitar. This whole research thing is still muddy waters for me. Well, you're probably not going to get a CIJ or an MIJ for 1000 bucks because they have brought... So crafted in Japan and made in Japan are two different eras of guitar that were made in Japan. Uh, they are a, and they're, they're definitely coming up in value. If you don't want to spend $1,000, I would definitely recommend getting a player series, whatever. Frank said, had I known that, I would have already bought your pickups. I messaged you and you just said no. <laughs> You didn't explain it, apparently. Oh. He's the person that just asked about the 49 million. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I, you just said no. Dude, sometimes I get up in the morning and there's like 30 of them things and I like response things. And I'm literally like, no, we don't do that. Yes, we do that. No, we don't do that. Here's the link to that. Like literally one right after another. And so uh, I apologize if I was short in my answer because that is literally what some of my mornings look like. <clears throat> it's crazy. That's why we do this. Yes. That's why we do this. Um, Robinson's Custom. So this is sort of in line with the earlier question about quick plug components from G Fetish. You might want to include them in the hot swap review. Mm. Is there a hot swap review? He's talking about the Reddit thing. James Howell. Dylan, what do you think of the... Seymour Duncan P Rail Humbug. I feel like somebody asks that every week. You I need know. to make a video or something. Here's what I think. Like, I should just make a, a t-shirt that says P Rails are stupid. Of the Seymour Duncan P Rail Humbuckers, they are made of a P90 and a single coil rail pickup, mm -hmm. made for different coil splitting options. The P uh, that that pickup is the Pontiac Aztec of guitar pickups. Not everybody's car people. It is the KLR650 of guitar pickups. Uh, it 
does the thing, but when you really get down to it, it's that's all it does. And it's ugly, and it doesn't do any one thing very well because it's made to be compromised. That's what I think. And next week when somebody answers that, I'll come up with another analogy besides, but Pontiac Aztec's pretty good. Donovan Embry, dumb question probably. Probably, What major difference is there between acoustic guitar pickups and electric guitar pickups? Do you make pickups for acoustic guitars or instruments? Not a dumb question, because I wish everyone in the world would ask this question, because it shows the difference between an electric guitar and an acoustic. An electric guitar, you're making electricity. An acoustic guitar, you're capturing vibration, and you're turning it into movement of air. Basically, an acoustic guitar is a drum. You beat on it, it moves air, you hear it with your ears, You with the string. With an electric guitar, you are changing kinetic motion, energy, which is motion, into electricity. Two completely different concepts. They look similar and they both have six strings-ish, or seven or eight, or nine or ten, or four, or five, um, but they are do it in a completely different way and a lot of the technology does not cross over as much as people think it does. Great question, actually. Is Victoria G says, you don't need to be a car person to know a Pontiac Aztec is fugly. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Rocky H. Rocky H first asked, Dylan, he said, Dylan, I have a question, will you be honest with me? And then this is the Absolutely. question that came through. I am obsessed with guitar playing and building, and I recently fell and hurt my left wrist, and I'm scared that I might not be able to play anymore, but I might be able to build. Should I go on? You should never quit. I broke my back in four places and almost died. They gave me a 3% chance to walk. I should be paralyzed from the neck down, and I don't quit. I never quit anything because... I am grateful to have what I have. And I know a guy, good friend of mine, cool dude, plays in town all the time, has no hand. He literally has a nub right here. Uh, like, he only has to here. Mm, it's more like right here. Or is it more like yeah, up it's, here? It's pretty Maybe short, it's up here. It's shorter. It's yeah. round like a ball on the end. That dude can play the hell out of a guitar. And ride a bike across the country. And ride a Harley across the country. And he's one of the best drummers I've ever met. Oh, yeah. He sits down on the drum throne, takes his belt off, puts the drumstick on the snare, puts his arm on the snare, wraps his belt around his drumstick, and plays the heck out of some drums all night long. Take the drumstick on, off, put his belt on, Grabs a strat with my pickups in it and a blue and a deluxe and will play the heck out of a guitar with no fingers. So Yeah. I remember so we met him as a drummer. Yeah, I didn't even know he played and guitar. And then the first time I saw him play guitar, I was, about I was to like, die. what? <laughs> I was if I could find some videos of him, I'll post them. But it, the dude is so good. And he sings and everything. And I'm like, if he can do it, we all can do it. Don't quit. I know that's super off topic, kind of, but on tan it's like tangent. But anybody that physical ability is only a percentage of what you're capable of doing. SF Dylan, is it possible to make a pickup without a bobbin? I believe lipstick pickups and single coil pick Bill Lawrence. I believe he had a bobbinless pickup slug. Magnets were held by epoxy. Yeah, so um, lipstick ones, the original ones were, um, it's really hard to do. I've tried it. Uh, there's a bunch of DeArmond pickups that are like that, that I've restored. Remember those ones I did where it was like, I made a bobbin out of paper and then I, I wound the pickup around the paper, and then I took the paper out. Like, it was this really, it's not, it's dumb. I mean, I mean it's, of course they did it, and I'm sure they had machines and jigs and stuff to do it, but I don't understand the reason, like, why you would. 
Tim Ziegler says, friends, the Bonnevilles are so great. I've been playing for two days and my fingers are raw great. Excellent. Are raw. Great tone. Excellent. Paul Need says, Gibson just released the 57 Classic and Classic Plus mm -hmm. sets. The spec they state are similar to the Thruxton and about $30 a set more. Of course, magnets and ohms are not everything. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Mike Olette. I probably botched that name. Sorry. Thoughts on bare knuckle silos. I've not played those particular ones, but I have never played a bare knuckle that I didn't like. They are really good. Really quality. And cool looking. Cabioth Dylan, do your single coils approximate any of Rickenbacker's pickups? Nah. I mean, I wouldn't claim for them to be because the design of the coils is so different that I wouldn't profess to. If I told you they did, it, I would, it would be a lie probably. Um, and then we got caught up and there's four minutes left. Nice. So. Sassy Cat says, my Gretsch hollow body does both acoustic and electric things. Yep. Yep. Um, so James Howell is the one you answered that question for. And he said, thanks. I'm not a Pontiac Aztec fan, so I'll have to avoid those. <laughs> <laughs> Just get some real P90s, man. That's what I would do. Hmm. Scott Gray said, I was thinking spork as an analogy, but sporks are actually awesome. Yeah, and they actually have an application, but even then, you only use them when you don't have the other thing that you really need. Or you're camping. Who well, that's what I mean. Like, I'm using this one thing because I don't have the other two, but I can't wait. Nobody ever says while well, they're camping, you know, when I get home, I'm going to get rid of all my spoons and forks and just go to this permanently. Nobody ever says that. Mm -mm. So that would know. be weird. Yeah. Do they make? Oh, they make like metal sporks for camping. You know, yeah. when, I, when I think of spork, I only think of KFC. You know what I think of when I think of spork? What? The dead hamster Aww. in our son's our son's freezer. That's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck C says, Dylan, did you have a chance to talk to your Gibson guy? I did. He does not have any. Colorado. Hey, man, how would you build a pickup, humbucker, so that it has more treble and can cut through a mix more than a normal, muddier humbucker? You would not do it by adding treble. You would do it by adding mid-range, uh, which means you would lower the output and raise the... Uh, well, you could add a little treble. You could probably go to, like, an Alnico 8 pickup. Uh, but I would stay lower output, you know, like in the... Seven six to eight five area. So for us, like in my stuff, if you want to do that, I would use um, the DAF for a more vintage tone, or the Super Eight for a more modern, like metally tone, not metal but heavier tone. Uh, but it wouldn't be muddy like what you're thinking, because a lot. What happens is people scoop mid range and it gets lost in the mix. Mid range is where it's at. All right, um, SF, Dylan, what is your dream pickup to make that is not in your current lineup? Mm. That's a great question. Um, I don't know. I don't have this kind of time. I would say... I would like to make some more. I'd like to experiment with materials more than anything. We've talked about this. Fat Philosopher, are we going to get to see those EMG Jazzmaster pickups on the channel? I don't have a Jazzmaster, so not really. Caveat, Dylan, do your P90 pickups fit into the Gretsch baritone? They seemed a trifle different route. Maybe. Uh, keep going and I'll look at it. 
Edge of Eternity 101. Um, seems like a bad time to ask, but I have a HBLP Junior copy with one P90. I don't like the pickup. Also, I have an Agile AD2200 that I put Tone Rider P90s in. I really heard no difference. I'm picky. I like vintage Lawlers. Do you have a similar pickup? If you want a P90, I got you a P90. Definitely. Ask anybody in the comments. They probably already have them. They're really good. It's my favorite pickup. Uh, on the Gretsch thing, I don't think it'll fit. I don't think it will. It's an, it's, it's an interesting route. All right. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. What happens at nine o'clock? Nine o'clock, we go off topic, man. We got some questions from Patreon. Mm -hmm. We got one there. Mm -hmm. Ask whatever you want. Maybe we'll answer it. If it's a guitar question, we will not answer it unless it's a super chat. The only way after nine o'clock that we answer guitar questions is it's a super chat. And I have... Uh, let's do the Patreon thing first, and then I'll tell Don about my Audi thing. Okay. We'll answer all the questions we have so far. Okay, we'll do that, yeah. Rob F. Hello, Dylan. Oh, I've read it backward. Rob F. Hello, Leslie and Dylan. I'm running out of guitar questions, so we'll ask one for after nine. Dylan, on Tuesday, you talked about your Bonneville Flats speed record. Mm -hmm. Were you the rider on the two record runs? Does your team still hold the record? If not, for how many years did the record hold? I was not the rider. Uh, the rider who rode the bike, his name was Steve Engerfeld. Uh, he won the Baja 1000 like nine times or something. Um, and he was a friend of mine, lived in the same town as me. And um, he rode the bike both times. And I'm not sure if we still have the world record in that class or not. I want to say we don't. Maybe somebody else has already beat it. I don't know that to be f true, though. I don't remember. All right. Nick. What happened to outsourcing of the video editing? <laughs> I personally prefer your editing over the outsourced stuff. I'm hoping for a better show from Ferrari, Mercedes, and McLaren this coming weekend. Aside from Red Bull, who else catches your eye on the paddock? As in, what's your second team? <clears throat> um, video editing. Video editing. We did it for two months. I didn't like it. I it, it, it did not save me enough time, and I didn't like it because um, I am going through this like existential crisis right now, and it's started about then, where I don't know what I want my YouTube channel to look like because I'm so tired of it. Um, so I've been kind of changing things up. I've, you guys have probably know somebody said something to me like, you need to be more consistent with the thumbnails. I know, but I'm like experimenting. I've been trying to experiment with different video formats and different stuff like that. And I just don't have the control when I let somebody else edit. And I like to edit. I really enjoy editing. And so I'm going to just do it myself. <clears throat> um, so as we continue to evolve the channel and I have, I'm having more fun with it in this lately because I've just kind of taken control of the content more. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, F1. As, as far as F1 goes, uh, Ferrari's going to be way back because Ferrari had to take a 10-place grid penalty because they're already out of ECUs for the season, which is really weird, on week two. Um, so they are going to be back, way back. I would like to see McLaren do well, but I really would like to see Fernando do well. I'd really like to see uh, a legit third team be up there fourth team with you know Red Bull I'd like to see Mercedes do better but I really would like to see Fernando Alonso do good so that's your second yep I think I would like to see Fernando Alonso I'd like to see Alpha um, Aston Martin do good cool this week all right um let's I want to take this one that came in before nine and then you can talk about Go for it. um so Lars Wright says, Dylan, what is your favorite brand of coffee? It says you were a coffee lover, right? It should be is. I am. Yeah. So um, 
We experiment a lot. I don't really have a favorite brand. We experiment a lot. Um, I've noticed that I've gone to, well, I've had to because my new grinder doesn't like dark roasts. So dark doesn't mean, light roast doesn't mean it's not as strong. It just means the time that they roast the coffee. So I don't like real oily beans. So I like a lighter roast because it jams up my coffee grinder. So, um, <clears throat> but other than that, I like a light roast. But other than that, we try all kind of stuff. We might not try it twice, but we try all kind of stuff. <laughs> we might not try it twice. Yeah. We don't keep up with what we like, though, I don't think. I'm trying to better. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. The only thing we ever consistently bought was before we had that grinder, and we would buy that, like, a Charleston Roasters yep. medium something coffee. That was consistently good. I we do know that we're going to try something different in the espresso you don't like department. It. I do, but I think we got to buy less of it. Mm. I, feel like it? Mm -hmm. I feel like we don't use it. I feel like we don't use it fast enough. It's rancid. Yeah, well, it doesn't go rancid, but it oxidizes and it does change how it tastes for sure. Maybe irritation. Maybe that's true too. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I drank my Americana the other day and it was fine. I thought so. Maybe it's my imagination. I don't know. I was just smelling different beans this morning because we got that new coffee. Did you like that? I don't have an opinion, so it must have been fine. Yeah, I think I was good. I liked it. Um, and it was something we'd never seen before, so that was cool. Yeah. All right, tell Don whatever oh, yeah. we're going to talk Hang about. On. Let me grab this. <clears throat> Check out this sweet metal sign that I got. So, you know, we bought our Audi um, like three weeks ago or a month and a half ago or however, whenever that was. And technically, it was used. Mm -hmm. um, but for some reason, we are being treated like the car was brand new. So we got in the mail a $150 gift card to Audi swag.com whatever they call it so i got like a couple hats a bunch of shirts and this really cool audi sign which i think is really awesome so i got an audi quattro uh anyway i want to show that to you don because i knew you would dig it yeah <clears throat> Benny's World, thank you for the super chat. Benny says, since you guys mentioned it, will you guys have time to do a review on the grinder? Um, he owes lots of reviews. <clears throat> you know what we really need to have happen around here? Around here? I need every video. Counting crows. What? I need every video to get 50,000 views in the first week. Okay. So then I would have time to make all these videos. <laughs> so, what does that have to do with that? So that I wouldn't have to do anything else. Because <laughs> I would love to just make all these videos one right after the other. Uh, I will get to it. I promise I will get to it. I don't know when. Don't make promises you can't keep. No, I will get to it. It's on your list? It's you on my list? list. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You heard him, Benny. I mean, the video list right now is... The Temple Board video. We can't talk about guitar series. The Tonex video. We're talking about a different channel. The Explorer video. Different channel. I know, but I'm just saying there's like... Irrelevant. I've got like 10 videos, guitar stuff, and I probably have that many... Yeah, I could shoot a video every day for a month right now. Get on it. Okay. Just kidding. All right. Are you ready to... Um, mm -hmm. Just grab in. Robinson Custom said, great job speed reading, Leslie. I don't know that I'm really good at this, and a lot of people are like, you missed my question. Um, but we use an app is what we... There's like a... I guess this piece of software isn't an app. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, to run as lives. 
and I can basically like grab questions and they dump them in a specific spot. I think you might've been the same person who was like, how do you cut through all the noise? I just glanced through it and grabbed the relevant ones. What are you doing? So here's how this works. That's creepy. Right? Well, so here- It's like within, within, within. Within, within, within. But basically- yeah. So you can star them and then they go over here in this favorites and that's what I read out yeah. as the questions. So yeah, so she favorites the, because this feed's coming by super, super fast. And then, and then up here is our audio. And then over here is super our chat super sound. chat sound. This is just going to give you a free one. And then over here is all of our questions for Patreon. And this is that where... That is so cool. Yeah. Anyway. anyway. There you go. <clears throat> now you know. Now you know. That's what we see. And did you see when I scrolled up that the super chat was green? So we know when you send one. That's why we can pick them out super fast. Yeah, and plus it like highlights something on the yeah, bottom. Yeah, highlights something on the bottom yeah. of the screen too. Yeah. There you go. A little behind the scenes. Bonus. Um, all right. Hang on. Um, Sorry. that's not your Who's reading. on the sign? Um, I would assume that's the... Um, he said, is that Michelle... Mouton? Yes. I would assume that's what this is. Because it's that era. Right? 82, 84? <clears throat> it was a woman rally car driver. She was fast. All right. Van Chan Guitars. Dylan, did your accident happen before you met Leslie? Yes. About... Five years before. Curtis Chavez, what's in the glass, Leslie? P.S. Nice hat, Dylan, but you have an awesome head of hair. Um, what was in the glass was a mule. Ginger beer and vodka. And should have been lime, but I accidentally put lemon because oh. I was in a hurry. Whoops. It still tasted fun. The ginger beer is really good. I'm just drinking water. Designated walker. I'm gonna walk from here to there. I would not let you guide me walking <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> Whether I was drinking or not, yes. huh? you would stub your toe every time. <laughs> Stu Crombie, Dylan, how do you think Senna died? I think the undercarriage bottomed out and it sent him forward. People say the steering column snapped. Um, I heard the steering column snap too. I have a real hard time looking into racing uh, injuries because that's how I almost died. And so sometimes when that happens, it, I, I feel those too much. So I don't spend a lot of time on them. Forget what I'm doing. Jim. Jim Woodard, thank you for the super chat. He said, got my Slash guitar. Now I've got a Python and named him Slash. I put up a vid of him on my channel. He's a cutie. LOL. Of course. That is, if you like snakes. If not, he's terrifying. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. We're not scared of snakes. That's really cool. On this super chat, my Gibson guy said, Hey, I want to ask you about a thing. Do you want this guitar and this guitar? And I was like, yes. And he's like, I have to wait until the end of March because our fiscal year is resetting and then I'll start to be able to send you more stuff. Back off of guitar stuff, but I was putting it under that super chat because it's mm. related. Mm. <clears throat> Jim Woodard slipping them in, huh? Yeah, well, what, and I what's like... your channel? I mean, it's probably the name he's commenting under, y'all. Yep. Or it might be, uh, he also has a podcast, the Practical Guitarist podcast. But I don't know if it's on that one or if it's on his personal one. I mean, if you put a picture up, I'm sure it's a... Van Chan Guitars, think we'll ever find out who the Stig is? Yeah, it's, um... It's been different people, right? Yeah, it's been different people, but the original one was, um... Oh, I can see his face in my mind, but I, I can't remember what his name is. Doc probably knows. Yeah, he'll, he'll chime in. Somebody will chime in. Um, SF, Dylan, in the 1979s... 
<laughs> Chrysler made a six-cylinder engine, which was called a slant six. Plymouth Dusters and others had that engine. Mm-hmm. Would put that engine on par with Toyota or Honda. So that's where I got the name for the lopsided humbucker. Because it was that. That's where I got that name. I had a friend who had a Plymouth Volari, a Gremlin, and a Dodge Aspen. All three with that that engine. The Plymouth Volari and the Dodge Aspen were the same car, just... Doc said, I thought the inquiry showed that Senna was killed by the actuating rod for the right front suspension coming up under the helmet. Ugh. See? And he said, Stig is Ben Collins. Ben Collins. Yep, that's right. Awesome. Thanks, Doc. Caveat, Leslie, Dylan, the two of you are certified nomads. What does certified mean? Certified nomads. Isn't that when you... um, Go to a mental hospital? Certified nomad. I mean, who certifies you to be a nomad? I also uh, don't think we were really nomads. We were kind of bougie. We are kind anyway. of not anymore. Have you passed this on to your kids or are they homebodies? They are homebodies. Yeah. <laughs> they they, they like to they travel? They would like to travel, but they... But they're young, broke kids. Yep. <laughs> who work all the time because... I would also travel with them or take them to travel, but they work all the time. So because they're broke. (laughs) Yep. But I mean, you know, they'll figure it out. That's how they're supposed to be. They're learning. We did travel with them a lot. Yes. From the time they were like, so they do like it. If I called one of them right now and they could go on a road trip, they would not even ask where we were going. They'd be like, cool. And we could leave like in 10 minutes in the middle of the night and they'd be ready to go. It. Bryson wouldn't have any socks or underwear, but he'd be ready to go. That's true. Robinson's Customs. Why are there no colleges, high schools, or other that have Mastiffs as their mascot? I mean, how do we know? I don't know all of them. I don't know. I had a Mastiff. She was amazing until she died. Or, well, she got... I don't know if she died. I... Yeah, I don't know that. She got a disease, and I couldn't afford to medicate her because she was 170 pounds. And the medication was like $700 a month. And this guy's like, well, I have a farm, and I already have that medication for some of my other animals. So if you want me to adopt her, I can take care of her. And so that's what we did. Um, And then I never saw her after that because it was a really bummer of a day. But she was an amazing dog. She was really cool. She was huge and slobbery and really, really, really loving. Slobbery. Are you looking for Mastiff school mascots? Yeah, but nobody answers it, so I'm thinking he's right. Yeah. But there's just like a lot of weird things. Makes sense. Anyway. Um, Curtis Chavez says, hang on, I'm trying to open that back up. Has Leslie done an episode of Dylan Talks Tone alone? Probably. Didn't we have like overdub ones way back in the day? Yeah, so we <laughs> used to do every once in a while, we would do these videos. Maybe we only did one each. Maybe we did. Maybe it was just one. We did a thing. And was it on YouTube? Oh, it might have been like Facebook. It might have been a Facebook Live or something. It definitely wasn't live. I don't it definitely think. wasn't. Because it was anyway. pre recorded videos. Right. I don't know where they were. So the answer is probably no. Don't tell them. We should do it. Do what? You should voice over one of my videos. No, I should. It was hilarious. It was not hilarious. Yours was funnier than mine. Everybody thought it was anymore. hilarious. It was really funny. What we did was she took one of my videos and just left the sound off. And pretended she was me and like voiced over the completed video trying to explain what I was doing. Like trying to be me, only she was just voiced. It was hilarious. It was so funny. And yeah, apparently she doesn't want to do it again. But I would totally, I would totally post it on the channel. It was really funny. It was really funny. (laughs) that (laughs) 
Yeah, why don't you do a Dylan Talks to Him video by yourself? What am I going to talk about? Dylan? Talking tone? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, it man. doesn't even make sense. My name ain't Dylan. It's true. You could do that thing like that Peter McKinnon video with his editor. He like dressed up like him. It was hilarious. Oh, I could do all your catchphrases and everything. I'm telling you, man. They'd be funny. I'm not mean enough to be you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should do it. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> it would be funny. If it got 100,000 views, I would laugh so hard. Dan of NJ says a person is committed to a psychiatric facility, not certified. Okay, thank you. Well, why? When somebody says they're, they're certifiable, what does that mean? That it's offensive. Okay, well, I no, I'm genuinely asking when somebody says that about someone in that con, I thought it was in that context. And yes, it might be a, like a slangy term. Jason Albert said April Fool is coming. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. It is. Is it a Saturday too? I have no idea. It's a Saturday. Oh, you're gone. No, I have to come get you. You can shoot it while I'm gone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so awesome. Uh, <laughs> That'd be so awesome. Mm. I do have all the access. Oh, that would be so awesome. Let's see. Charles Wallace says, it takes me about eight minutes to pack for a road trip. Just saying. Same. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, we're pretty good about it. Realistically, we've been sitting here doing whatever, not thinking about it, come up with an idea and leave in 30 minutes for a weekend. We're, yeah. Yep, yep, says, where is home base for Dylan Talkstown? Upstate or low country? Uh, we are in Augusta, Georgia. We're in the middle. Central Savannah River area. The CSRA. Um, Jason Albert said, yes, it's Saturday. That's a, well, the reason I'm saying that is because we could put a video out on Saturday. Chuck C. He says, a... Leslie builds a stumac pedal. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Mm -mm. All right. Where are the questions at, man? They're coming up with ideas for you to do a mm. video on April Fool's. That's why. Doc said it took him 30 minutes to pack this morning. Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, is he going to Singapore soon? Mm. No, that's mm -hmm. not until. That's a tour. It's in the fall, right? I don't remember where it is on the F1 schedule. So I can't. It's later in the year because he was trying to convince us to go. That's right. Oh, yeah. September or something. Fred yep. Bunn says he's an Aiken. Oh, nice. Hi, Fred. Hi, we're in Augusta. Fred. We were in Aiken a couple of weeks ago. Because that means you're in the CSRA office. That's, That's probably right. why he said that. Like, yeah. wait, I'm in Aiken. Like, wait, yeah. I know where that is. Yeah. You have to know what CS... You have to know the CSRA yeah. to know what CSRA yeah. means, I think. We saw a commercial from Aiken Tech. Lionel Smith Limited. Yeah. Advertising some on cloud. I know. I mean, it's like a fancy suit store. I know. Snobby men's clothing. Hey, Snobby men's clothing, and they sell hey. on clouds, including like... women's on clouds. That was weird to me, because they on say clouds, men's period is dumb. Mm. It's kind of a snobby shoe. No, it's not. Even though it looks like the. Even though it doesn't look snobby. I mean, they gotta pick rocks out of their shoe just like I do. That's true. It ain't snobby. And mine are waterproof. I actually had to buy her one of those little pry bars to put on her key to pick shoe rocks out of her shoe because they get stuck in there. That's pretty funny. Fred Bunn said, would love to meet you guys. Nice suits. Um, Jim Webb says, tell us more about Bonneville. Tell us about the salt flats. Uh... You'll regret driving your car on there if you ever do it because it sticks to everywhere on the inside of like all your wheel wells and stuff. Um, 
So but don't. But we taught our son how to drive a stick there. Yeah, we taught our son how to drive a stick on the Bottleville Salt Flats, and uh, let's see. And we've also been one time before it totally hardened, and it looks like they're standing in the middle of a lake. Glass. Those were some of those yeah. prettiest pictures. Pretty cool ever. pictures. The kids would stand out on the flats, and there would be like two inches of water across the whole thing. It was like sunset. Thing. It was so pretty. Mm-hmm. And so it was like they were standing on glass. It was just really, really neat. Uh, if you go there, you have to really be careful about how you put sunscreen on. So you have to put it like on the bottom of your nose and like the bottom of your chin and like underneath your ears because. You wouldn't normally think of that with sun, but it reflects off the ground. And so you could get like a sunburn like right here underneath your nose or like in weird places. Um, no, Bonneville's awesome. It's really, we were, we stayed there for a week the last time we were there. And, um, and Google took us all off road. Hmm? Yep. We did a bunch of four cause we had our Rubicon then and we did a bunch of four wheeling and all kinds of stuff. It was really cool. Bonneville's neat. That whole part of the country is really wild with um salt lake city and all up to all up to all across the state over to bonneville it's just a completely different terrain and it's not just the bonneville salt flats it's miles and miles and miles and miles and miles of salt like it's flat i mean out there you're going and the speed limit's slow too it's like 70 and you're just, well, we were in the motorhome, so you're really only going 65 anyways. And it just feels like you're not even moving because everything is, like, totally flat. There's no, the telephone poles. Well, going to Denver. Are the only reference. Is there a class this week, too? And next week? Is there, oh, I don't know. What are you going to Denver for, Tom? Do I have my dates right? <laughs> Am I supposed to be leaving tomorrow? <laughs> no, and I didn't think you were going to be there at the same time anyway. No, I believe me and him are not going to be there at the same time. Right. Um, I'm going to be there from the 26th to the 1st. I hope that's right, because that's when I'm going. He said April on the lab. I know. He freaked me out. I was like, oh, no. Let's see. Yeah. What else is going on in there? Um, I don't know. We have super chat though. Oh, sweet. Gremlin Fred three. Thank you for the super chat. Hi guys. I would like to know if you could only take one guitar to every F1 race for a season, what guitar would you take? If you could go to F1 races, you wouldn't even be I thinking wouldn't about take a guitar. guitar. No, nope. it'd be an acoustic carbon fiber. Yep. Cause you got to travel. Yep. So it would probably be... Would you take the little one or the big one? The little one. Because it fit. Yeah, the close. I'd take the close. I really want the travel version of the McPherson too, but I just haven't gotten around to buying one. He's going out there <clears throat> to see them play tomorrow night. That's awesome. That is really cool. Yeah, I would do that. If take I... some video. Yeah, I please see do. it. That was really neat. Yeah, that is neat. That's a good friend. It is. We're not that good a friend. <laughs> he would do the same for us, though. Yeah, if, but we were play. if we were doing something exciting. We don't have anything exciting, though. <laughs> Just sitting here working, making pickups and making YouTube videos. That's all we do. And sit in webinars. Oh, well. I learned a bunch of things, and that just gives me more work to do. So, uh, Ooh, we did. Did we talk about this last week that we did go to the place in South Carolina, like drove through the county where the Murdoch murders happened? Mm-mm. We did not talk about that. We did that with my sister when my sister was here. We didn't talk about a lot. I don't think we stayed on very long last week. Mm-mm. I thought February was bad. March is shaping up to be not so hot, too. It's been rough. It's getting better. It's getting better, but... Yeah. Well. Yeah. Thursday, yeah, we've had a, it's been a, yeah, we're fine. We just had a lot of things going on that we had to navigate. And so it's been, I was saying that, I think, in my Patreon update earlier today that <clears throat> we were very preoccupied with things not related to guitar stuff or not related to 
YouTube, and so I had to kind of mm-hmm. get back on track this week, you know, and get yeah. This is the and, first day we've been home. Yeah, in, and it was because we had a, this to do. Yep. Yeah, we've been going every night, um, doing taking care of stuff. It's been crazy. Doc said, plus he wound a set of pickups for JJJ, so I'm hand delivering them. What? That's, That's awesome. I have a box of, so, I have a box of Don's pickups. That shirt is amazing, by the way. That thing is so soft. It's like the oh, best t-shirt you have right you now. You missed it last week, Don. I wore the Sault Ste. Marie uh, shirt, outspoken, last week. Yeah. I forgot about it, and then your sister was here, and then it was in the laundry, and I was like, oh my gosh, they left a shirt. And then I was like, no way. No, this is the <laughs> one that Don gave me. Yeah. That shirt is so soft. Cool. Yeah, Hampton County is what we drove through. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> we were not where the trial was going on, but we do have a friend that was like on TV and everything. Yeah. Crazy. Because she's crazy enough to go up there. She was there at three o'clock in the morning standing in Two line. days in a row. Two days in a but row. the second day she got to sit right behind Buster. Yep. I was like living vicariously through her. Yeah. That was really funny. For those of you that don't know, I'm sure you do, but... The Alex Murdaugh murder trial is in our area. I don't think a lot of. of people know. I had to explain it to we a were, coworker. In I Vermont. heard you explaining it to somebody yesterday in yeah. a meeting. She was like, I saw people post it. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> we were pretty obsessed with it. I still am because there's still more to go after the murders. have. He's got convicted of double murder and now there's all this financial stuff and it's just a really crazy, crazy deal. So, I listened to all the podcasts about it. <laughs> all right. Stu Crombie, how far do you travel in the motorhome? Um, so, we're not in the big one anymore. Nope. And we've gone all the way across the country in the little one. We have. Yeah, we've done... S- I mean, we lived in... The last time we went on a big trip, we were gone for six weeks in the van. And we made it. I was so nervous about that. Uh, we've trip. used it for other trips since then, but that was the biggest one. That the we, longest. That, yeah, we took. And we had to go all the way to California because we went to Na- the Nam show. So we have been, we've been coast to coast with that one. We've been to the key. We've been to Key West with it, and we've not been north. We haven't. We've I been mean, to we've Chicago been, with it. I was going to say, we've been as far as Chicago, yeah. We've been to Chicago with it. I mean, we got, you know, hailed um, on in Kansas. We got hailed on in Kansas a couple times. Well, hailed once and poured rain the second time. We've been to 13, 50, 14-something thousand feet with it because uh, we took it to the top of Pikes Peak. We did. <clears throat> um... And, of course, all through California, all of the crazy roads in California. And it doesn't matter what you do. It's too heavy, and the brakes get really hot. Yep. We had to have a picnic at Pikes Peak also. <laughs> yeah. When you're coming, Unplanned picnic. When you're coming down Pikes Peak, you have to stop at this little thing, and they infrared your brakes, and they were too hot. And they're like, you have to park over there for 30 minutes. So I was like, okay. We'll, we'll just sit there and it was really pretty eat weird. lunch. So... I believe Fine. that by this weekend, the van will officially be for sale. That's great. Robinson's Customs. What, if any show, are you guys going to next? We're going to the ballet. We're going to a ballet, yeah. Next weekend. Mm-hmm. Is it next weekend? Yeah. Oh, because it's the day before I leave. Yeah, because remember, I like panicked. I had already bought the tickets, and then you were like, wait, am I going to be here? I was like, crap, are you going to be here? <clears throat> no, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it, actually. I like anything live. I don't care. I will go to it just to experience it, to see the people. Um, Yeah, I think it's really neat. There's not much I wouldn't go to. I mean, there are some things I wouldn't go to, but that's because I wouldn't want to be in that crowd of people. That is the thing. There are a lot of things Mm -hmm. I would do, but the crowd that it draws is the unappealing part to me a lot of times. Yeah. I mean, when you think of shows that... taste is really strange. Right. 
when you think of shows that we've gone to that we've left early, it's always because of the people. Yeah, not because of it's the show. It's not because of the show. It's like, Except ugh, one time. I don't want to be. Who's that one guy that everybody wanted to see? We just talked about this. Marcus King. No, not that one. We left that early because he sucked. Um, no, we saw his whole thing, right? No. Was he with Blues Traveler? Oh, we left there in Blues Traveler. We stayed yeah, for Marcus. Because he sucked. He, like, got old and sucked. Yeah, that's right. Um... <clears throat> Now, who, who did we, uh, who was on the Tommy Emanuel bill? Oh, 400 unit, uh, what's his name? We just Everybody likes him, yeah. Anyway, he played like two songs and I was like, this is dumb. Yeah. But I don't fan. know, I don't know how anybody could go on after Tommy Emanuel. Like it didn't, no. it probably wouldn't matter who it didn't it make was. sense that Tommy Emanuel was first. Yeah. I don't care who it was. He should have headlined everything because he's yeah. amazing. And a great storyteller. Yeah. That was fun. Oh, my gosh. If you ever get a chance to see him, you got to see him. Yep. Oh, Stu said we answered his question and he heard all of it via Bluetooth headphones while he went to the bathroom. Nice. I mean, that's what this iPad is for. I, I use this iPad... And I put Texas Toast live stream on it while I'm like setting up and walking around and eating and doing You're a bunch of stuff. You're going to say you go to the bathroom with it. I, was like, I mean, I, if I had to, I would. I would just, you know, it doesn't have a camera. I mean. It does. It does, I suppose. Um, Rusty Fenders. Have you tried the assistive touch in the Ultra? It lets you navigate the watch with one hand and even trigger the action button with pinch. No. I have not. I don't know what that means. I don't have an ultra. She doesn't have an ultra, and I do. That thing would, like, totally drown my arm. I mean, mine <laughs> takes would. up my whole arm already, and I have the little one. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, tell you the truth, I don't use this thing. I'll have to look into that. I do not use this watch to the potential that it I mean I just don't it's cool I love it but I don't use it to the potential of it for sure um Paul Need says I've not been following the Murdoch thing here in the UK but I have been following the will they won't they indict him thing there in Georgia what is that oh Oh. Um, Jason Albert said, are you getting a different van or something completely <clears throat> different? We are getting rid of it totally. Um, we're not using it. So if anybody wants to buy a Class B yeah. motorhome, please let me know. We have zero upcoming plans that, because he's having to fly. Yeah. All of our trips are flying trips we're, this year. Yep. How we're, weird is that? It's really weird. Um, so it just... Yeah, it's... It doesn't need to sit. It's Those been, things don't need to sit. No, you got to use them... Um, and it's at a good spot in its age, miles wise and everything where it's still, it's, it's great. Like somebody should buy it cause it's really, really, mm -hmm. it's perfect. Um, but we just don't use it and it's a thing sitting there that I just, and we have future plans that we want to do some different stuff that I think will be better for all of this. And so I would rather... Ditch it. If we want another one, we'll just get another one in the future. I yeah. mean, you know. But it just isn't this year. No. Or probably next year. So no. it just doesn't make sense to have it like, right now. I could see a couple years. I could see three or four years going by where we don't need need it. And so I, I just want to get rid of it. Well, it's still, you know, it's worth what it's worth. And people still really want them. They're kind of in high demand right now. So. Yeah. And I feel like that. That whole market is so strange, and mm -hmm. like, um, if you find somebody, I mean, I'm <clears> hoping <throat> we're at an advantage because if you find somebody who really knows what one does and took care of it, I think that's more beneficial than buying a new one. Oh, yeah, like we had to learn everything ourselves, and we could teach somebody. Yep, um, and we've already fixed all the little shake it out rattles. Mm -hmm. Um, but yep. we've not had any problems. No. We've not had any problems. I have had things in there that 
I was like, I don't like how this is wired. I'm going to yeah. solder this instead of crimp connector it. And I'm going to... And we upgraded some <clears throat> connections too. Yeah, I'm going to put a breaker in here instead of a yeah. fuse. And I'm going to do some, you know, various things like that to make it really dependable. And so we've done and that. And safe. And yes, and safe. Um, we've upgraded the solar and we've done a bunch of stuff. It's, it's really awesome. But it's just not being used enough to justify owning, so... It's a, you know, it's one of those things you, you gotta, for us anyway, if we're not using it, it's gone, basically. Hopefully. I hope. Yeah, and if we can't get what we want for it, we're just gonna keep it. Like, that's the other thing, is it's for sale, but if I can't get what I want for it, I'll just keep it. Hopefully it sells, though. Just so we don't have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, nothing else came in. Cool. Well, thanks for coming and hanging out with us on our live stream on Thursday. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you check out all the links below. Make sure you go to Dylan Toxone and buy some pickups. There might be a video tomorrow. Kind of depends. I'm building a bunch of humbuckers in the morning. And I'll see if I, I've got a video almost done, so I'm going to see if I can finish it. When's the last time you went live? And get it out then tomorrow. Your Patreon you. thing. Or whatever you're supposed to be today. doing. Today. Oh, my bad. I did that today. Okay. Yep, we did a Patreon. I'm trying to do it on Thursdays. I, I missed it last week. I filled in everybody what was going on. We were, I just told them we were, had some stuff going on. I was preoccupied. But, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, it's awesome. We will see you probably tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out.